on the Goofy Weird to Guru. I'm back from a long break. That's right, we're back. I'm the Faith Thrower Sister, A.K. Dad, and we are back from a little bit of extended break with all the fun stuff happening with COVID, with my responsibilities working for a school district, and other stuff going on with him and his brother. We had to take a little bit of a break. But you know what? We're coming back at you with something very exciting. I'm going to post to all. Very special. You know what? His mother, the beautiful camera lady, A.K. Mom. And my grandmother. And his grandmother. They do so much to take care of him and his brother. So, since I've been really having to put in the hours at work, and I haven't been able to be home a lot, I want to do something really special well, this weekend. Because this is the last weekend. My school opens Monday here in Saratoga. So, I'm probably going to be really busy for the next month. And I'll so, be at school. this weekend, and he starts back to school Monday. So, this weekend, we wanted to do something very special for the beautiful camel lady, along with his Mima, a.k.a. his grandmother. Video. So, we're going to make him a very special meal, and we wanted to share this video with you. This is something that, you know what, he really likes this meal, and they really like this meal. And it's something I enjoy cooking. I don't eat it, though. It's fish. I, you you all know I don't eat seafood. So, we are inspired by our great friends across the pond, the Atlantic Ocean. Our friends over in... Australia? No, England. 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 And you got an eye, eye snotter. He's got an eye snotter. Let's just do that. So, we're inspired by our good friends over in England. And one of the favorite things that... Everybody in this house loves our fish chips. And what they call chips in England, what we call fries or French fries here in the, in, the um, in the states. Now I like one of my favorite dishes is steak frites from France, just steak with French fries. Well, uh, guess what? Since I'm going to make homemade frites, or as they call them in England, chips. In England, what goes really good with chips? Fish. Fish. We're going to make fish and chips. So we're going to be showing you how we do the fries and get all that done. And we're going to show you the special batter that we use to go along. Beer batter. It's a beer batter to go with our fish. And today we got a nice, soft, beautifully fresh haddock. Last time I did this, what do we use? We use cod. Usually we use haddock or cod. Um, from everything we've seen traditional in Britain is haddock. Or white fish. Well, they're both a form of white fish. Correct? Yeah, a form of it. Yes. So they're both a white fish, cod or haddock. Last time we did with cod. But you know what? This time we really wanted to be authentically British doing the most famous dish, fish and chips. So we got a nice... Bit and of chips. Bit of haddock. And haddock. we're going to make that up for everybody here in a little bit. So stay with us. We're going to be showing you the first step getting the potatoes ready to do the chips for British fish and chips here on the Goofy Wheelchair Guru Show. All right, folks. Back at you here on the Goofy Wheelchair Guru Show. You know what I got in my hand? That's, that's right, Guru. It's a potato. The basic thing, what you need to make a chip for British fish and chips. So you pick up some nice potatoes. russet potatoes. Or baked potatoes. Or baked potatoes. So we're going to come over, we're going to get the sink on in here. And what are we doing right now, Guru, on these potatoes? We're washing them. We're washing them. We want to make sure they're nice and mm -hmm. clean. So we give them a good oh, little yeah. scrub down. Just like that. Just run them under the water, not too hot, not too cold, just a nice cool water. We're going to put these up over here. And hey, what are we going to do with them next? What device are we putting them into? We're, we're going to use a gadget, aren't we? Yeah, from like our older videos. One of our very first videos, we're going to use the Rotato Express to peel these potatoes for British fish and chips. So let's wash up a couple here because we want to make sure we have enough. Just going to wash one more big one here I think. I think that'll be 
a good start. Okay, so as you can see, nice clean potatoes. So we come over, if you all remember the Potato Express, there it is. We're gonna, oops, we have a garbage bowl here ready for the skins to go in. Now you can always do these when you do this. You can take the skins and save them and deep fry them or put them in the air fryer and you can make potato skins. You know, like, um, you know, kind of like potato skin chips. Oh, oof. My hand is wet. It doesn't want to, uh. Yeah. Don't forget potato wedges. Potato wedges? So, as usual, we push that down to there, we hit the slow button, and this thing starts peeling the potatoes. See? So you can see. Look at it go. Oh, it's missing some. It's having a little trouble. Let's stop that for a second. You know, I found out this can happen with this. See, it, it gets a little jammed up in there. And it doesn't happen all the time, but it can happen, especially with these potatoes. They're very fresh, and they got a very thin skin. So we're going to start it again there, and get it rolling. So, Guru, are you excited to be able to go back to school on Monday? Yeah. I think he is. He's very excited. His brother's not. Is he? No, he isn't. Nope. So, um, so we'll set that there. We gotta peel up all the rest of these potatoes. But so, Guru, tell me something very that you miss about school. What do you miss? Oh, I hate it. You love school. What's the thing you miss the most? Just hanging out. Just hanging out. No. Oh. oh, hang on. It's still a little jammed up here. Let me try to get that all out. I think I got it all. I'm just going to do that. that. That seems to help us. Oh. We're all kinds of going wonky on this thing today, aren't we? There we go. Sometimes you got to give it a little help, folks. So the Google goes back to school on Monday, him and his brother. I think the Google loves school. Don't let him kid you. School is one of his favorite, favorite places. Which is a good thing, because you know what? School's important. You really need it. So I'm happy to see you go back. And hopefully, we won't have to worry too much about this whole COVID thing. There's a little bubble on this one, you can see. So, eventually, hopefully, it'll all pass. Hopefully, we'll go back to normal. That's right. And hopefully, we'll get that thing. Like, prevent it. Oh, a vaccine, you mean? Is that what you're saying? You want a vaccine? Well, we'll see. It could be coming. So, but we're not going to talk too much about COVID. Because you know what? I'm sure, just like me, we're all sick of hearing sure COVID. Got to take sure our precautions, but... I'm sure we're tired of hearing all the news. It's always old news. It's always old news. So we're getting these potatoes peeled up here, right, Guru? Because, again, what are we making? We're making fish and chips, authentic British style. Now, Guru, do you know what kind of oil we use to fry up the potatoes and the fish and chips? What? We use a combination of vegetable oil and potato oil. The potato, not potato oil, peanut oil. <laughs> I'm looking at potato and thinking, but I'm supposed to be saying Peanut oil. So we use a peanut oil, and I'll tell you what, these come out phenomenal. Okay? So we're going to finish getting these peeled. Okay? So we're going to get these peeled. And we're going to come right back at you and show you the next step here in making the chips for authentic 
British fish and chips. All right, folks, so, Guru, what do we do? We got the potatoes, what? We got the potatoes. We got the potatoes, and they're all nice and peeled. You can see it right there. So all you gotta do is just basically cut off this little excess piece here. I really don't want a lot of skin in my fries, my chips, I should say. I mean, for mine, with my steak, it's going to be um, frites. But for the guru, they're called chips because they're having, again, authentic British fish and chips. And like before this video, that we started filming, we were watching the boys. Yeah, we were sitting there on Amazon. We were watching a little bit of the new episode of the show called The Boys. If don't know if you've all seen it, we can we enjoy it. I highly recommend it. He does highly recommend it. That's right. So, who's your favorite character on The Boys? I mean, Huey. Huey's your favorite character. See, I got. I'm a big Carl Urban fan, so I really like the Butcher, right? So here we go, got these little ends snipped like off. Starlight. I like starlight. You like Starlight. Well, that's because you think she's hot and you enjoy looking at her, isn't it? So, uh-oh. What does that not look like it's lining up? Something's not lining up here. Let's see what I did wrong. Oh, check it, check it. I'm looking. Let's see what I did wrong. There we go. All right, so. You might remember this gadget. We tested it out here on the Goofy Wheelchair Guru Stove. This is like the Starlit something. I forget what exactly what it's called, but it's really good. It's been really helpful to us. Ow, 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 ow. Pause for a second. Hey, welcome back. I'm bandaged up. And see, I put a little slice. I pushed that down too far. My finger instead of using the thing. That's how it takes five. I'll take five. Thanks, Guru. So we'll get these on here. <laughs> and uh, start pushing them down. See, I always push it down a little bit to start it, but man, it really slid down easy. I hope there's no more slicing and dicing. No more slicing and dicing on my fingers, at least. I got a softball game tomorrow, and this is my pitching hand. So you see how nice this works. This is one of our favorite gadgets. I mean, wait, they also have a mellow version of that. So you can see, I mean, it's really working that? well to slice up these potatoes, get them set to make some authentic chips to go with the fish. I'll show you some here in a second. I don't know why I got my finger that close to the blade, folks. I normally am smarter than that. There we go. So, dump those into there. Let's take a look. Look how nice these chips came out. So, we'll get soak this in some water. We're going to fill this up. In, with some water Wait, just above the cover it let it soak for about yeah well with this stuff is doing it we'll get the rest of this stuff set up but stuff here has to soak and rest and for that we're gonna go on and play some PlayStation we'll be back at you in just a few moments all right folks so you can see water in here potatoes are soaking that's right they're gonna soak for about how many minutes 30 minutes so while they're soaking so we're, we got cornstarch. Cornstarch, yes, that's one of the flour. things. Flour, flour, baking, baking powder, baking powder. Yep, club soda, club and soda. of course beer. some Guinness. Guinness extra stout. So a nice Irish beer to go with British fish and chips. So what we need to do first is we need five tablespoons of just all purpose flour. Yeah, all Two, purpose flour. Two, three, four, and five. So five of those. Let's put the cover back on here so we don't. We're going to need some more of that later. Just so you don't have any spillage. But we need now 
cornstarch. You know what? I just had to go into the store today, so I have to get this open. And hopefully not make a big mess. But if I do like that, that's okay, because the beautiful camel lady, A.K. Mom, will clean it. So we need five tablespoons of this. One, two, three, four, and five. And remember, it doesn't have to be precise. You don't have to sit there with a knife and scrape it all off. Just pour out five tablespoons. All right, so put the cover back on that. All right, baking powder. We need two teaspoons. So my thing, you know what? This doesn't fit that well in there. So let's just grab a spoon. Spoon. And we're gonna. One and two of the baking powder. Now, you need a third of a cup of, actually it's two thirds of a cup, I believe it. Ooh, look at that. Hang on, gotta open that slowly. I'm making all kinds of messes here right now. Cutting my finger. Of a cup. Let me get my uh, mixing spoon here. So we're gonna dump that in, and then we're gonna pour in some beer. We're gonna start mixing because I'm sure we'll have to add in some more. Let's see here? No, we might not need any more beer. And I think we got this pretty well. So you just want to get a nice porridge like consistency. I might be a little bit too wet here. So I'll just add in a little bit more cornstarch and flour if I need to. Nope, I think this is good. Actually, this is come out just what I want. A nice wet batter. And you know, I like to use that uh, Guinness. It really gives the batter a nice flavor and goes really well with the fish and chips. Uh, now I want to get this a little bit, a little bit nicer. I should have just used a whisk to begin with. I'm gonna whisk this all up. See, nice consistency. So form a nice batter on it. I don't know. You know what, folks? I think I want to put a little bit more cornstarch into that. So we're going to do one more of this, and we're going to do one more of flour. You know, sometimes flour. you just put in a little bit too much stuff, and you know, the easy way to do it is just, boom. This isn't that type of recipe where you got to be precise on it. It's more about getting the consistency right. Wait, then we're going to do there we go. Right? That's shaping up beautifully. Let's scrape the edges here, pull that stuff off. Okay, now, it's important, a little pepper, we were watching cooking and a little salt. We were, we were watching some good ones. You saw some interesting stuff on there, right? Wait, and we even saw one with Gordon Ramsay. He was talking about how great his burgers are. And I gotta tell you, I think he overcooked the one a little bit. You know, a real burger, you want a nice warm pink center. And I'll tell you what, his looked a little bit beyond pink. We were also watching Jamie Oliver. Jamie Oliver. Yeah, we were having a good old time, Binging right? Binging with Babbage. Yep. Binging with Babbage. All right, so we got that uh, made up. Now, that's right. So hang on, Bear. So we're going to take this now. We're going to put this over in the freezer. This has to rest in there for 30 to 60 minutes. You then we'll pull it out. Chest. Huh? In that chill chest. In the chill chest. We're going like to put it in Alton there. Brown says. Okay. So we're going to throw that in there. And I'm a mess. See, I got flour and cornstarch all over me. So we're going to throw that in there. 30, 60 minutes. And we'll come back at you and show you how we make up our version of authentic British fish and chips. Authentic. Stay with us. Hey, right, folks. Here we go.
Goo, what's up over there? What do we got here? What What am I unwrapping? Uh, some sort of like fish. Fish. This is nice, fresh haddock. So we're gonna leave it on the package there on the paper. Let's roll this out. Let's see how big these are. See if we gotta cut them and all. Cause I don't know. Cause you know what? I had the beautiful camera girl pick out the fish that she wanted. I said, you go pick out whichever one looks the best. So, she got a nice small piece here. That'll be for the guru. And then for the... Wait, whatever's best for you? For the beautiful camera lady. Oh, look at that. Actually, it works out perfect. So, there's there. There's that. There's that. Beautiful. So, what we want to do is we want to season these up a little bit. So, some nice pepper. Perfect. Now, a good amount of pepper. You, you really want your pepper on there. Some a little bit of salt Perfect. and some paprika. Perfect. You know what? I found paprika works. This is my own little touch on this. Paprika. Paprika. So pat that onto there. We're gonna take these, flip them over. We don't have to cut them at all. You don't have to cut them. They're pretty cut. Some more pepper on the other side. Well, that's how I got them at the store. It's not how it is when I catch them and when I'm fishing, right? Wait, like they're already caught. And again, some more salt. Wait, they're already by the seafood aisle. They were came right from the seafood counter at our local grocery store. Put some more paprika on there. And there we go, the fish is set to go. I'm going to close this back up for right now because when you have dogs, you got to be careful of that. We're just going to put this over here for now because you know what? I'm going to take these off. Well, just one off. I'm going to leave the other one on because I cut my finger, if you do remember. And just a few moments ago. So Now these are my steaks for later. I just picked up some petite sirloins. I'm gonna show you here. Petite sirloins. I'm gonna take these. Sirloins. I'm gonna throw this out. I'm gonna grab my uh, meat tenderizer from over here. There it is. Hey, you might remember. Look at. We've now sh done three gadgets in this video that we have done in previous videos of items we use. Like from Wolverine. So we're gonna tap these out. We're gonna flip them over. We're gonna tenderize them up some more. And these are gonna be for me. And maybe the guru if, he, if I feel like sharing with them. Okay, so there's those all done up. Now, we're going to take this. And the only way to do this is not to do it out of the shaker. Put some in your hand. And sprinkle it on. Two and go like, like sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. sprinkle, sprinkle. There's that. Salt we could just do out of the shaker because it shakes out really nice. Give them a little pat. Flip them over. Nice evenly. Like nice even. Oop. Like. And I don't mind if mine are too peppery. I like the pepper. It doesn't matter if right. it's peppery. Add, give them a little pad again. We're going to push them to the back here. We're gonna put this back on. And everything's set to go. So we got to let that marinade. Here, let's turn this up. Let's come over here to the guru. So what do we got to do? We got to wait what for that marinade? 
the batter, that yeah, is in the refrigerator. It's got about another yeah, 15 or 30 minutes to sit in there. When it's all set, nice hot pan of oil, we'll have it all set to go. We'll get it to about 350 degrees based on our kitchen thermometer. And uh, get that oil just right, 350, that's about what you want it at. Get it to there, and then we will run the fish through some flour into the batter and into the oil and we'll gently lay it into there nice and slow and we always start to start to get that nice golden brown batter crispiness on the outside right the only way i can make this more authentic is if i had a british newspaper to wrap it all in right yeah yeah so stay with us we'll be here to show you the rest of the Goofy Wheelchair Goose Authentic British Fish and Chips. Hey right, folks, here we go. We're excited. We are super excited. Oil's hot. It's ready for the potatoes to go in. We're going to start making the chips for some authentic. What, what are we making, Guru? Uh, fish and chips. Fish and chips. Authentic British fish and chips. So we're going to slowly start to add in those. Guys, we, uh, we drain them of water, and we're going to slowly start to add them, not too fast. Woo, look at that, it's starting to pop up at us. Okay, spread them out, you don't want to put too, too much in there, but they got to measure it out, so just the way the amount goes in, there's that, and that is going 350 on that oil. See, we, I found frying any higher than that, too much. So, we're gonna put the cover on, keep the heat in there. We're gonna take this last batch of the fries, we're gonna just pour them into there so they can get nice and dry. So we got them in there, we're ready to go. We have a pot over here with paper towels in it to drain those fries when they come out. And, let's take a turn over here at the Guru and I. So, Chips are going, right? Yeah, you got some yuck on your face. You still can't sum up. So we got the chips going. Are you excited about that? Yeah. You can't wait for that fish though, can you? Going through my inbox. He's going through the inbox on his email. So if you sent him anything, you might see it. So, here we go. Chips are going. Fish is laid out. Batter is just resting, ready to come out. You got about Batter five inches on that. And then we're gonna start doing the fish up. Uh-huh. It's going to come out. The batter's going to come out. We're going to get the fish done. We'll be showing you all that here in just yep. a few seconds. Stay with us. All right, folks. So, we got the fish ready to go. Just dredge it in his flour, shake off the excess into the nice beer batter here. We'll grab some tongs. Still want to be gentle with this, though, as gentle could be. Get that into there. Let's let the excess drip off. And I got this nice hot oil over here ready to go. So let's get this a little bit closer. Gently lay that in there. And that should cook up fairly quickly. And we'll put the next piece in. Look at that beautiful fish sizzling away oh my god somebody heard how awesome this fish is they're calling they're asking if we do delivery i think that's what it is we're gonna flip that over look at that beautiful little brown i got a plate over here with some paper towel on it to put the finished product on so it can drain should be just about there You'll probably see here, I got some nice thyme and rosemary to do um, my steak for steak treats. But this is for the beautiful camera lady and the Nima, the guru's grandmother. But there's the first one out and done. So, let's just do it again here. We'll, we'll walk you right through the, whoa, right through the steps. We'll take this nice big one here. Look at the size of that one. Let's get it in here into the flour. Because you may never know what we're cooking up in this kitchen. You never know. We do all kinds of things. 
We're going to be making up some, pro what I call my provincial chicken. Like they call homemade pizzas. Homemade pizzas. pizzas. So again, we shake up the excess flour. Then we take it, we go to the batter. Our burgers. Burgers? We cook burgers, yes. That's how you say burger in Russian. So again, let the excess kind of drip off a little bit here. It doesn't hurt to have too much in there, but this one's going to take a little bit of time to cook because this thing is let drip big. In. Let drip. So let that cook there. And you can see oil temperature is just right. It's not burning it. You, if you look at this one here, look how nice and crispy that came out. Look at that perfect golden brown. That is a perfect fish for fish and chips. So let's take a look over here at our fries. Oh, the camel lady's over there. She used tickle on the back of the guru's neck. Let's see how these chips are turning out here, folks. Look at the color on those. Look at that nice golden brown coming up. They're still going to be a little moist on the inside. Yay! It will be perfect fish and chips here. The uh, Goofy Wheelchair Guru's authentic British fish and chips. Stay with us. We'll show you the finished product chips. when it's all done. You heard him. Guru said it. Fish and chips. Alright folks, so the fish is done. It's resting in the oven from the fish and chips. Now, as you know, I, the wonderful faithful assistant, aka Dad, does not eat fish. So, I'm going to cook me up some beautiful steaks and do since they're having chips as they call them in England in France the frites so I'm making steak frites so I got a nice hot pan going here some olive oil in there see I got me some fresh thyme here mmm smell that thyme oh it's beautiful got some nice fresh rosemary here Mmm, can you smell that rosemary? Aren't you glad that we got smell vision? If you haven't gotten it yet, make sure you get it so we can send you out the smells. And you know what? We're going to make a creamy peppercorn sauce here. But I have to do something a little bit different. Let me turn this up for a second. I got to do something a little bit different. I don't have any cognac. So, I'm going to try making it with some Knob Creek bourbon whiskey. We'll see how it goes. Oil's ready. We're dropping this in. It's gonna be hot. You're gonna hear sizzle. Boom sizzle. Boom sizzle. What a boom sizzle. Number three. Uh oh. You know what? I'm out of. I used the other pond there for to do the fish. So I'm gonna have to try these crappy ones that I really don't like. Because if you just how I want them. Okay. So, nice high heat, get a good sear going on those. Again, just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil in there. Salt, pepper on the steaks. We're gonna let that start cooking up. We got some Guinness left over here. Mmm, Guinness is always good. That's why I used to make the beer battered. Authentic British fish and chips. We'll be showing you all this when we plate it up. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get the steak going. And get going on this side. We're gonna flip it. When we flip it, we're gonna let it suit off for another few minutes, and we'll come back at you with that to show you the finishing touches on cooking this and doing the creamy peppercorn sauce. So, folks, steaks are going for the steak feet. Let's move this in a little bit. I'll show you. So I flipped it, seared it for just about a minute. I dropped some butter in there, some fresh thyme, some rosemary. You can see it right there. We're gonna grab a spoon here, and we're just gonna. Ladle, see we're gonna tip the pan like this. We're gonna ladle a little bit over to help baste it a little bit. Now all this butter and this juice right here is getting that nice thyme and rosemary taste going into it. Again, we just did salt and pepper. And these are just about done. If the beautiful camera you could grab me a plate to set these on so that they could rest. I'm going to take this and just close this up because I'm done with it and I'm done with this. One second. Alright. 
and then I'm going to show you the really special thing that is that really makes steak frites amazing, and that is a creamy peppercorn sauce. I just want to take this one here and turn them. We got a big, nice thing of fat right there. You know what, folks? If you're health conscious, don't you don't want to eat this. But you know what? Fat is flavor. It is where all the nice yumminess comes from in this entire meal. I mean, yeah, the rosemary and thyme is a nice thing. The butter is a nice thing. Okay. We're just sealing this up a little bit. You can see it's still pretty squishy, so it's going to come out with a nice, perfect. I like my meat a little bit on the rare side. So I'm going to have a nice, rare steak going on here. I'm going to give one final flippy flip. I'm going to start pulling this rosemary and thyme out of here because I don't want that in there for my sauce. And you're going to get to see some pyro techniques here in just a minute. The guru is actually over there with his cell phone getting ready to film this because I always get a big fire going when I do this because I tend to put in a little bit too much of the alcohol. And I'm recording it in 4K and He's recording it in what? I'm recording it in 4K at 60 frames. Oh, okay. In 4K at 60 frames. I have no idea what that means. I'm old, folks. Don't know what that means. So, we're going to pull this back a little bit because I do not want to set my phone on fire. So, here we go, folks. Let's have some fun with fireworks. We're going to put in... I'm going to need this. You know, somebody does this all the time. See, they, they put the stuff in here and they loop it around other stuff, and I can't stand that. But it's okay. So we're going to put a little bit of alcohol in there. Woo! Now, since I don't have a boon, I have an electric stove. I have to take a match, and I will light this on fire. Pyrotechnics here. Oh, look at that. Already out. Alcohol burned out fairly quickly. Just a little bit of a stir around. It'll deglaze the pan a little. Alright, so the alcohol is burned off of that. We're going to take our beef broth. We're going to put this in. We're going to make a nice creamy peppercorn sauce. So I'll do that. Let me grab the pepper. So we're going to drop some nice fresh cracked ground pepper into here. Very coarsely ground. Put a little bit more in. Give it some good taste. Now you can do this with green peppercorns. You can do it with black peppercorns. But we're going to let this cook off, we're going to let it simmer down and reduce to about half, and then we're going to add in some nice heavy cream, folks. And this will create a perfect sauce for the steak plates. And we'll show you how everything plates up here with it. So let's get our... Stop. Oh, beautiful camera girl, I'm done with those. I'm done with the rosemary and thyme, if you want to put those away too. And actually I'm done with the whiskey. So while they have beer in theirs, I have whiskey in my meal for tonight. I, got I think I made out on the better end of this. A nice Knob Creek straight bourbon whiskey. Hey, right, we're going to turn this temperature up a little bit more. I got it in clear 4K HD. You got it in clear 4K HD? He's got me a clear 4K HD. That wasn't as good of a fire as I normally get, folks. I'll show you camera settings later. He's going to teach me camera settings later. Can you believe that? All right, it's about simmered down. Let's add the cream. Is there a video to come out better? Like, if we record it in 4K, like, I don't know if I can see it better. 
that. So I have to do its thing. I'm leaving that my little secret here. I am not showing anyone this. Oh, gotta take that off. I do not want you to see what my secret is here. About make this sauce come out perfection. I'm gonna hide that again. I didn't want you to see it. So we're gonna mix this off. Come on, wrap that. They just keep stirring it here. Oh, God, that smells good. Even with it being bourbon instead of cognac. I really want this to thicken up a little bit more. Let that go. Cook off some more of that water. Oh, beautiful camera girl, I'm done with that heavy cream. So there it is, folks. Stay with us. We're going to be back. We're going to plate this all up and show you how everything came out here on the Goofy Wheelchair Guru Show. So there they are, folks. Authentic fish with chips. This is the Guru's place. So now a lot of chips on there. But see, here are the palm frites. So French chips with the steak and the crazy Pepper, creamy peppercorn sauce drizzle all around. I, actually, let me show you this sauce. So, let's see. Look at that sauce. That is beautiful. Still got some of that time in there, but that's okay. Look at that. That was perfect. That came out of there so good. This fish, look at this crispiness on that breading. Chips are cooked with crispy just right. There it is. Authentic British fish and chips authentic steak frites with a creamy peppercorn sauce here on the Goofy Wheelchair Guru Show. So let's take a turn over to here. Let's, let's check out the Guru. So Guru, let me see. Does that look perfect to you? Yeah, checking out my camera settings. He's checking out his camera settings and he's getting ready to eat this. Would you like to try one of the uh, chips right now? How good mm. is it? The old pool. So the faithful sister, a.k.a. dad, did well for the guru and the beautiful camel lady, a.k.a. mom. Uh, great meal here on the Goofy Wheelchair Guru Show. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Hey, if you did, if you like what you saw, we'll be doing some more of this, too, to go along with our gadgets and other stuff that we try. So make sure you click that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this episode, click that, throw us a like on this one. We'd appreciate it. And, you know, again, we would appreciate it if you did, if you enjoy our videos, please click that subscribe button. Don't miss any of the excitement, right? He likes seeing new subscribers. All right, folks, that's been it. The first video, video back from our little vacation hiatus here on the Goofy World True Guru Show. We thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time here on the show.